Hi everyone. So what we will do is we will check whether a given number is a palindrome number or not. Okay. I've already written the code. I'll explain you. Of course, let's see a demo of that. So if I just run Python app.py, it asks me a number and I write 121 and it says S121 yes, is a polynomial number. Now if I rerun it and let's say I write 123 and it says no 123 is not a polynomial. Okay, uh, this is what we are actually trying to build today. Uh, first of all, what is a polynomial? Polyndrome, right? So what is a polyndrome number is? It is simply when you have number something like this 1, 2, 1 then if you reverse the digits and then write it back for example the one you write it as first then the two then the one then you look at that what happens over here the number whatever you have in the left and the number you have whatever in the right are exactly the same even after you repeat the you reverse the digits correct so one more example if i want me to give you the other example is Mm, one three one basic example you write one here and three later and this one again so you get the same one three one and one three one okay fine the so polyndrome is not only just defined for numbers it's also for text for example you say um, madam so you rewrite this so you write the m first you write this m later you write this D, you write this A, and you write this M, and you get the madam back, right? So even though you write the text in the reverse order, or even if you read it from the um, right to left, you actually get to read the same text what you read it, okay? Fine. So in this tutorial, we're gonna restrict ourselves to uh, look for a palindrome numbers, because that involves some mathematics, and I wanted to actually enjoy that. So how do we do that? How do we actually figure it out? So let me actually tell you how we actually and do it very easily. Now let's take a number one, two, three. So first of all, we'll find out what are the digits and we have to reverse it. I know that the one, two, three has to be reversed in a way. Thus the first last number should be written first and the last but one. And finally, the first number should be written that. So this would be the number. And that's how actually these numbers are actually getting reversed. Okay, fine. So how do we actually mathematically do that? Now, if you notice what's happening over here, let's take the number 1, 2, 3 and let's divide by uh, 10 and let's write the quotient over here and reminder over here and we'll identify that what are these numbers that we can actually plug it out. Um, so, for example, 1, 2, 3 has been divided by 10. So, you get 12 times 10, which is 120 and the reminder is 3, correct? So, 12 times 10 that is 120 plus 3 was giving you 123. Now you take the number Q here and put it over here and divide again by 10 and then you find the quotient. Clearly this is 1 times 10 plus the 2 as the reminder, correct? Now you take this 1 again and try to divide by 10. Now clearly 1 is lesser than 10. So you get 0 times 10 plus 1, correct? Now if you notice very clearly what is happening over here, you got the 3 at the last digit, you got the 2 at the last bit 1, you got the 1 at the first digit itself. Now you can actually write these numbers. Now how do I actually build this 321 because I wanted to build this 321 programmatically, right? How do you do that? Uh, that's so simple. You probably, let's revise, uh, let's write the revise number, uh, reverse number, uh, we'll initiate it with 0. Uh, what we do is, we'll write the Mm, new number or um, not new number it's like we'll update that revised number as let's take the previous revised number and then uh, what we will do is we'll multiply that by 10 plus whatever the reminder that we got it in every time so plus r okay so that means the first time what we'll get is initially the reverse uh, reverse number was assigned as 0 so 0 times 10 plus whatever the remind number reminder that is 3 uh, therefore we will get 3 here 
next time what we will do we got the revised number as 3 right and so now what we do is 3 times this is the reverse number 10 plus the remainder what we get the remainder what we get is 2 so this time it is 30 plus 2 so that gives us 32 I'm sorry now this time we got this is the reverse number now we'll take that number and then multiply that with 10 and plus whatever the remainder that we got it so that is 1 and therefore we get 32 times 10 that is 320 plus 1 that is 321 so this way what we got here is we actually have reversed 123 to 321 programmatically okay fine hopefully you understood this concept whatever actually i have mentioned over here if you haven't do so please try to pass the video and understand how this actually technique works all right let's jump into the code and then we'll code it in python as well so i have a, a vs studio um, vs code open over here as you see that i have already written the program so but i am going to start from the um, scratch so all that i have here is i have a function called this polyndrome which accepts a number uh, i'd like to actually um, encoded with the data type that I am mean getting in. So it takes a number, it returns whether true or false based on uh, whether it is a polyndrome or not. Okay, fine. So the last bit of code over here, it just actually helps me to run this file and get the input and uh, pass into this function called polyndrome and then uh, show that as an output. Okay, fine. That's it. Now what do we do? I know that I needed the original value to compare it later. So what we will do is we'll write the original number is equal to the number that what we get. Um, then later, as we already know, remember in the um, in the canvas that I have written, I needed the reverse number to be initiated as zero. Then every time I wanted to have a reverse number to be updated, then I wanted to use it later. So let's do that. So let's write the reverse number as zero. Then. Um, first of all, when how long I wanted to do it? So I wanted to do it as long as I have the, um, I, I, as long as I have the zero and the quotient, right? So remember, as long as I have the zero. Remember, every time what I do is this was the number that I am actually is looking at. So every time actually I update this numbers. So the final time I would have been updated as zero. So I wanted to run this code only and until the. Uh, until the number that I update is actually uh, zero. Okay, fine. So how do I do that? Now, so while uh, number is greater than zero, so as, as long as this number is actually is greater than zero, we want to update that number. Now in Python we have a nice uh, little num uh, easy function called div mod, which is going to give you a um, divisor and the quotient so for example over here if i write the number and the reminder is equal to um, div mod and if i write that number again and write 10 and what is that going to give is it's going to take this number and divide by 10 and it's going to give you the quotient over here and that has been reassigned as number itself remember i wanted to reassign that quotient as a number again and then later i wanted to update it so here is the reminder. Uh, I'm sorry, reminder. Why do I do that? Here is the reminder that I can use it later. Okay, fine. Um, how am I going to use that? So the first job, I wanted to update the reverse no, reversed uh, number, which is the current reversed number, and then uh, multiply that by ten, and plus whatever the reminder I get it at each time. Uh, remember at this time itself the number has been updated so the while loop has to run again and it checks that whether the number is actually greater than zero or not and it keeps on doing it. So that's what we were doing it over here. So as long as this quotient becomes zero um, it keeps going on. Okay fine. Now what do we get? Finally I actually get a reverse number. Let's first uh, return the reverse number and see uh, what is this gives you probably I think uh, I'll print the um, reverse number after the while loop and run the code 
so that's python dot python app dot py i'll write a number one two three and it should give me three one two one that's correct okay fine so now um if i run one more number let's say one two five three it should give me three five two one correct yes that's correct now what we do that's easy peasy all that we have to do is just compare that original number whether if this is equal to the reverse number that what we have written then simply print the statement called s um, let me use a formatted string and say that the original number that what we have written is a polyndrome right good otherwise of course we'll also return true true for the feature purposes otherwise we'll simply print the statement saying that no this is not a polynomial number and we'll return false um, you can actually come over here and then simply print over here itself because you know um, polyndro no um, what was that this original number is not a polyndrome hopefully that helps okay fine now we'll finally we'll we'll uh, return the false okay good i guess because you see that the if statement and uh, returns that means actually this is not going to run only when uh, this is not going to run if the original number is equal to equal to um, reversed number otherwise this is going to run and therefore this is what we wanted okay fine i hope we have finished the function now let's save the function let's, let's save the file and then now we'll let's run python app dot py and it asked me the number let's write one two three for a check and now it says no one two three is not a polynomial polyndrome and that's correct now we also wanted to check polyndrome number so let's write python app dot py and now this time we'll give a polynomial number you know that 121 was a polynomial number and now yes s is a polynomial number okay we'll finally check one more time uh, does 156 uh, let's make it let's check a big number right so then 561 for example and no 156561 is not a polynomial number you know because um it starts with 16561 uh, right that's good okay now uh, i hope uh, you enjoyed that video and i'll see you in the next video with a different project thanks a lot for watching i'll see you